and other action workers. I'm going to make a statement, and then if you would like, you can ask some questions. Gujarat is blessed by having an exceptionally enterprising people. Gujaratis have gone out from the state to many other parts of the country and indeed all over the world. And they have done exceptionally well everywhere. And the country is proud of the achievements of the people of Gujarat. In this context, I must say that I was really surprised when Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi said the Congress and the Congress-led central government have always hated Gujarati. Nothing can be farther from the truth. I realize that many things are said in election time, but when they are gross distortion, they need to be rebutted. The most famous Gujarati whom the Congress and indeed the whole nation revered is of course Mahatma Gandhi. His name is reproduced on every note in our country. So everyone sees it every day. The next most famous Gujarati is Sardar Vallabhai Patel who enjoys a very special position in our freedom struggle and who played a glorious role in the integration of our country after independence. Jawaharlal Nehru and Sardar Patel worked hand in hand to consolidate the gains of our freedom. Nothing is gained, as is often attempted by Modi ji, to pit the two leaders, great leaders, apart. Sri Muradi decides was another great leader of the Congress party. So he left the party in 1969. I had the privilege of working with him when he was the Prime Minister in the Janata Party government in 1977 to 1979. I also worked very closely with Shri Acham Patel, another distinguished son of Gujarat, who served as Finance Minister in the government of Shri Umarati Desai. Let me also express my anguish at another remark Prime Minister Modi ji is fond of making. He has often said that nothing was done in the 70 years before he became Prime Minister. I ask him, does he really mean this? I would ask him to consider the following facts. Life expectancy at our independence was 31 percent and it is now 71 years. <coughs> Indians are living 40 years longer. Is this nothing? Literacy was 18 percent at independence. It is now 76 percent. Is it nothing? India did not have food to feed itself and depended on American food aid in the early years of our independence. For many years now, we have been self-sufficient and we are even exporting food. From being viewed as a slow-growing economy, we have for many years now been recorded as one of the fastest-growing developing countries. We have, ladies and gentlemen, still a long way to go in many areas. I am not asserting that all these achievements which I have mentioned are only because of the Congress party. They are first and foremost the achievements of the Indian people. Governments have helped and indeed played a crucial role in many areas and Congress governments have done their bit. We have had many non-Congress governments in this state and we have had both Congress-led coalition and BJP-led coalitions in the center. 
they have all contributed to build this great country. I wish the Prime Minister would find more dignified ways of impressing crowds and seeking their votes without resorting to statements which denigrate our country as a whole. I must also point out that while denigrating the past, the Prime Minister also tends to exaggerate what he will do in the future. He was recently quoted in the press as saying that India will become a developed country by 2022. I would be the happiest person in the world if he can deliver that. But is he really aware of what he implies? Our per capita income, ladies and gentlemen, is now about $5,000 based on what is called purchasing power parity. At the lower end of developed countries, we have Greece with a per capita income of around $25,000. That is five times our per capita income level. To increase our income five-fold in five years, we would have to achieve a growth rate of 35% per year. No country has ever done this. Is Modi ji promising he will do that? Let us consider what the BJP has actually done. It came to power in 2014 at a time when the country was going through a slowdown. Our government was much criticized for this slowdown and we accepted that there was indeed a slowdown. We explained that some of this was due to global factors and some was due to our inability to resolve domestic problems. What has happened to the growth rate of the economy since the NDA came to power? In the 10 years of UPA 1 and 2, when I was the Prime Minister, we produce 7.8% GDP growth on average. This includes the slowdown in the last two years of our government. When the government, when the present government took over, they said they would take growth to 8 to 10%. Modi ji so far has produced an average of only 7.3% in the first three years. GDP growth in the first quarter of 2017-18 fell to 5.7%. July-September quarter has registered a growth rate of 6.3%. This is to be welcomed, but it is too early to conclude that this represents a reversal of the declining trend observed in the previous five years. Some economists believe that the CSO which released the figures day before yesterday has not adequately captured the impact of demonetization and GST on the informal sector that accounts for about 30% of our economy. Commenting on the strong growth in the second quarter in manufacturing, the economist at the National Institute of Public Finance, Mr. Govind Rao, has said, there is however a problem here. We are calculating manufacturing growth based on corporate reserves. This does not take into account the small and medium sector which suffered the most of the demonetization and the launch of GST. A couple of big worries remain. Farm sector growth fell to 1.7% from 2.3% in the previous quarter and 4.1% in the same quarter last year. We have to remember that this is despite the fact that the government has front-loaded its spending on projects forcing up the fiscal deficit to out of cash money. Many small businesses had to close down and lay off labor. I hear that a lot of labor had to migrate back from Surat. I've spent 
a lot of time on demonetization because it worries me that in a world where economic policy is becoming increasingly complex, we are not developing a culture where policy options are critically assessed and criticisms offered or listened to take corrective action. If leaders only want to be praised, they will hear nothing but praise. This is not a recite for recovery. I now come to GST where implementation is causing problems. I agree that a well-designed GST would be a general act of reform. It was an idea which the UPA government initiated. Unfortunately, at the time we were pushing for it, Modi ji was one of the strongest opponents. I recognize that in politics it is normal for those in the opposition to oppose. I gave him full credit that when he came to power, he saw the logic of GST and changed his mind. However, apart from the problem of multiple rates, there are loopholes in the administrative arrangement for the implementation of GST. In particular, small businesses, traders and exporters have serious concerns which need to be adjusted. Small scale and middle scale businesses, their problems require serious attention. It is well known that small and middle businessmen are the principal generators of employment in our country. If they do not prosper, we will not get the growth of employment we all want. The government should think hard about whether it is doing enough for them. I fear the demonetization, poor implementation of the GST, and the rise of tax terrorism under the guise of controlling corruption have seriously damaged the investment climate facing small businesses. The lack of credit from public sector banks to small business sector has added to their problems. The government therefore needs to think hard about what the central government and what the state government can do to change the business climate facing small scale industry. We have a number of nice sounding slogans such as Start Up India, Stand Up India and Skill India. But they are not backed by effective policies on the ground. In fact, the policies should come first before the slogans invented to describe these policies. Slogans come first and efforts to define policies come much later. This is not helpful at all. I should say a few words about agriculture. With 50% of our population dependent on agriculture, they are generally the poorest people. The welfare of the Aum Admi depends crucially upon the fate of our agriculture. The average growth of agricultural GDP in the first three years of the Modi government is only 1.8 percent per year. This is half the average agricultural growth of 3.7 percent which we have achieved in our 10 years under the UPA. Modi ji has offered the slogan of doubling farm income in five years. Doubling in five years requires an annual growth rate of farm income of 14 percent. I do not know if the doubling was meant to include the effects of inflation. If he was building in inflation at say 4 percent, it will still require a growth rate of 10 percent in real terms in farm income. I have seen no program that would achieve such a growth for the country's farmers as a whole. Perhaps this is another election jumla, but I feel that the government would be well advised to come forward with a credible plan that would achieve a growth rate of this order. I would not like, ladies and gentlemen, to end on a negative note. 
So let me say that the recent announcement about recapitalization of public sector banks is much needed and is welcome. It should be accompanied by a clear statement about the manner of recapitalization and most of all the reform the government proposes to bring in to prevent the recurrence of those problems in future. There is no justification for delay on these issues. They have known something is needed to be done along these lines and they should unveil the plans for public discussion as quickly as possible. Let us not repeat the experience with the GST of not consulting adequately in advance and repenting later on. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Sadan this side from Times Now. So we have a special question for you. Last evening we had a news break where the General Secretary of Maharashtra Congress has come out on our television and have said that everything is not fair in Congress as far as elections are concerned. He clearly came out with the audio recording his conversation with uh, MP Manish Tiwari and in that Manish Tiwari has clearly said that Congress is a proprietorship. It turns on proprietorship format. Not only really this sir, not only really this sir, let me complete. Not only really this sir, I mean you know, this was his education and he said that he is not allowed to contest election against Rahul Gandhi sir. Your take on it, after these allegations, do you really think that Congress should go out with the election? <laughs> I am not aware of the statement that you have mentioned, but the Congress is a democratic party and everybody has a right to say what they want to say. But what ultimately is the decision will be taken by the Congress High Committee. Did you talk to Sonia Ji regarding this, uh, this complaint of Shahzad Punawala? Any member of the Congress party can approach and whomsoever he wants to approach. No, it's a different thing that we cannot agree to everything that each member says. But we are a democratic party. The Congress Working Committee meets very frequently and if there are any problems, they are all discussed within the Working Committee. Sir, Namaskar. Excuse me a little louder please. We are not able to hear anything in the back. Uh, sir, we are sir, just sir. not able to hear anything. <coughs> sir, it's Surat Geet Textile Industry ka issue hai. GST jo hai wo seamless wo other tax hai. So, jo weaving industry hai, wo jab 5% job work pe tax bharta hai, तो सब उसमें रिफंड के कोई जोगवा ही नहीं है जबकि 8000 कॉमोडिटी ऐसी है जिसमें रिफंड मिल रहा है लेकिन अकेला पावर रूम इंडस्ट्री ऐसी है जिसको रिफंड नहीं मिल रहा है सर ये किस प्रकार की ये जोगवा ही है सर आई आई एग्री दैट देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम देयर एंड इट शुड बी एड्रेस सर एक सवाल ये था कि आपने इस तरह से बात की थी कि जो नर्मदा डैम है उसके रिलेटेड मोदी जी ने जब सीएम थे यहाँ पे तब आपसे कोई बात नहीं की थी लेकिन अभी उन्होंने जो पब्लिक मीट की थी उन्होंने कहा था क्या मनमोहन सिंह जी झूठ बोल रहे हैं मैंने बार बार उनसे यही मुद्दे पे यही टॉपिक पे बात की थी आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू एंटर इन टू एनी पब्लिक कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी विद प्राइम मिनिस्टर आई एम नॉट अवेयर ऑफ वॉट यू आर सेंगी टू डिस्कस इट ओवर विद हिम डॉक्टर साहब दो सवाल है एक ही पूछिए ठीक है कि पहले का आप जवाब देंगे नहीं फिर भी मैं पूछ लेता हूं दरअसल प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी को लेकर के एक ट्वीट किया गया कांग्रेस के ट्विटर हैंडल से चाय वाला करके तो उसको एक बड़ा भावनात्मक मुद्दा प्रधानमंत्री ने खुद भी बनाया लेकिन उन्हीं की पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष ने आपको लेकर के नमूना शब्द का इस्तेमाल किया तो क्या आप उनको किसी प्रकार का जवाब देना चाहेंगे इस पर आपकी क्या प्रतिक्रिया है पहला सवाल I don't want to personalize our relations and therefore whatever is being said, I recognize that in election time lots of things are said 
in his but i have always believed and that has been my consistent stand that we should not personalize our differences to a point that it generates unnecessary bitterness ठीक है परमिशन दे सर एक और सवाल है कि अगर सर परमिट करें सर बाय परमिशन सर अर्थव्यवस्था की जो हालात है उसकी तस्वीर आपने सामने रखी है लेकिन प्रधानमंत्री मोदी कहते हैं कि उनकी सरकार पर कोई दाग नहीं है तीन सालों में इसका आप किस तरीके से जवाब देंगे आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टू गो इन टू दैट एरिया वट इज बींग अबाउट सर्टिन कंपनी विच विद विच द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ द पार्टी इज कनेक्टेड इज सामशन देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम एटलीस्ट आई थिंक बीजेपी नीड्स टू क्लैरिफाई इट्स पोजिशन नॉट मेरली विश अवे दीज डिफरेंसेज और दीज थिंग्स विच आर मैनिशन आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट दीज आर फैक्ट्स बट वेन सम पीपल आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दीज इश्यूज इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट लाइक सीजन वाइज आई थिंक टॉप पीपल शुड बी फ्री ऑफ क्रिटिसिजम सर सूरत के कपड़ा व्यापारियों को जीएसटी में जो दिक्कत हो रही है उसको एड्रेस करने के लिए आप क्या सुझाव देंगे दिस इज ए कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मैटर बट आई हैव मैंशन इन माई स्टेटमेंट दैट देर आर प्रॉब्लम विद रिगार्ड टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर आर टू मेनी रेट देर इज टू हाई टू सीलिंग रेट विद सर्सेज एंड देर इज ऑल्सो प्रॉब्लम इन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन the gst system itself has some problem which need to be addressed so ayushman from nai decide so prime minister modi while elections comes he back he always shows his background as a humble person you in your earlier statement when you met you also said that you are from a humble background but you never mentioned in the public discourse how do you respond to this you have never said this in the public discourse that you come from a hum- humble background and all well i don't want to mention i the, my humble background i don't want the country to take a pity on my the basis of my background i do not think i would like to enter into any competition with prime minister modi ji on this particular matter sir kapda vyaparon ki samasya ke bare mein ek question hai ki कपड़ा मार्केट में जो कपड़ा व्यापारी हैं उन पर जीएसटी फाइव परसेंट लगा है जबकि आज तक आजाद भारत में कभी भी उस पर कपड़े पे टैक्स नहीं था यार्ड और उसके जो केमिकल और कलर्स थे उन पे ही टैक्स था लास्ट जो जीएसटी की काउंसिल मीटिंग आसाम में हुई थी उसके अंदर छह वस्तुओं पे जीएसटी से मुक्त किया था तो व्यापारियों का ये है कि क्या कांग्रेस जब राहुल गांधी आए थे मार्केट में कि कपड़े पर जो जीएसटी है उसमें संशोधन किया जा सकता है जैसे छह वस्तुओं पे जीएसटी मुक्त किया कर मुक्त किया तो क्या कपड़े पे भी आप तो अर्थशास्त्री हैं वित्त मंत्री भी रहे हैं रिजर्व बैंक के गवर्नर भी रहे हैं तो क्या ऐसा प्रावधान या ऐसा चीज हो सकता है कि कपड़े से जीएसटी मुक्त हो सकता है जीएसटी and i would not like to comment on what seems to be done i have listed the major problems that need to be addressed and if you have mentioned we need a mechanism to sort out all these problems whoever has grievances i think the gst council should be asked to carefully examine those problems and find credible pragmatic solution to these problems सर एक बार प्रश्न है एक मिनट सर नोटबंदी के बाद हमारे प्रधानमंत्री बार बार ये स्टेटमेंट दे रहे हैं कि लगभग दो लाख से भी ज्यादा फर्जी कंपनियां हमने बंद कर दी है कोई आवाज नहीं आई उनका इशारा है कि जो आपके यूपीए शासन के दस वर्ष में जो कौफांड हुए उसके व्यवहार वो कंपनियों द्वारा हो रहे थे तो आपके ध्यान में कंपनी आई थी या नहीं आई थी देर वर सम प्रॉब्लम and effective action was taken against the guilty people if you may after proper examination and therefore i have nothing more to add to that in our time 
if people committed some things which was wrong, there was effective action taken. I am not sure what action Modi ji has in mind. He never 